Coming up next, SPNN takes us back to 1999 with their series, Quarter Notes, Jazz from the Artist's Quarter. In this episode, Bob Rockwell. Rockwell was a major figure on the Twin Cities jazz scene from uh, about the mid-60s to the mid-70s uh, before he moved to uh, New York where he played in the Thad Jones, Mel Lewis big band for several years and then he moved on to Copenhagen, Denmark where he now resides. Uh, we're lucky enough to continue to hear Bob because he comes home at least once a year usually around Christmas time uh, to visit some family that he still has here. And whenever he comes home, Kenny Horse grabs him and uh, gives him a gig down at the artist quarter. So that's how we're able to uh, catch Bob Rockwell. So here is uh, Bob Rockwell, tenor saxophonist.
Thank you very much. That tune's got a great title. It really expresses the attitude of the tune. The tune is called Sorry About That. And it's written by a fantastic musician and poet and singer, tenor saxophone player Archie Shep. Uh, Bob went through a lot of different stages. Uh, he told me and a couple times that I interviewed him, as most musicians do. That's how they grow. That's how they develop. He was in a Coltrane period uh, for a while. Uh, but then he started listening to the older players, Chew Berry and uh, Ben Webster's and uh, Ben Webster and players from that era. So I think now you hear a combination of the two. You hear the, the warmer, uh, mellow, mellower sound of the older players uh, was still a nice cutting edge uh, from the Coltrane, uh, Sonny Rollins players and uh, their followers. Well, this saxophone is a con saxophone. It's an American instrument, and it was made in 1935. And it's got this kind of Art Deco engraving on the bell here. And the, the thing about this is it's got a picture of a woman, and all these horns have this picture of a woman. But on the really good horns, the legend has it that most of the horns only have, like, the woman's head. But this, the really good horns show more of the woman. And you notice that this horn you can see quite a bit of the woman. I like this horn because uh, well, these old American horns, they have a, 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 a more full kind of uh, warm sound as opposed to the French saxophones, the Selmers that are very popular. They have a, kind of an extra, like kind of a sharp overtone in the sound. And, and this horn doesn't have that. That's why I like it for jazz because it blends better with the other instruments. So the sound kind of goes, you know, like this way around you, you know. The other horns just kind of shoot out. And so I prefer this. For, but for electric music, maybe I play a French saxophone.
Next, we're going to hear uh, an excerpt from a, a tune called Blood Count, uh, a composition by uh, Billy Strayhorn, who was Duke Ellington's longtime friend and uh, collaborator. Uh, Blood Count, uh, though it's often referred to as a beautiful ballad, is something more than that. It was written by Billy Strayhorn as he was undergoing treatment for cancer, uh, which ultimately would uh, take his life. So uh, knowing that, you can feel and sense more of a, a, a desperation, a, a sadness, uh, maybe a hopelessness in this song. And I think uh, the interpretation you're going to hear by this young pianist, that he found this song to be quite profound, and I think it touched and affected him deeply. So he devoted the kind of time and energy to offering a very special reading of the song, uh, beginning with an extremely uh, elaborate introduction. Thank you. 
this next tune is uh, going to be a quintessential uh, bebop number, up tempo, hard driving, uh, blowing session kind of a tune. You're going to hear from everybody. Uh, all members of the uh, quartet will get to stretch out. You're going to be quite impressed with the young pianist and uh, some of the uh, motifs and devices and effects that he employs in his solo. And uh, Bob is uh, just a great straight ahead player, plays a uh, very free flowing style. Kenny Horst, a uh, very impressive uh, drum solo, I thought, uh, tasteful, thoughtful. And uh, Billy Peterson, of course, just drives the quartet.
best thing about coming back to Minnesota for me is to see my friends here. I'm playing with guys that I basically grew up with, especially musically. Played with Billy Peterson, the bass player, since he was probably 15. And uh, Kenny I've played with for over 30 years. And um, also just the energy <clears throat> that's connected with the music. And the audiences are the best in the United States, I think. A lot of people say, oh, the audiences in Europe are great. And they're, they are, they're good, but when you play for an American audience, you're on the same wavelength because everybody's been listening to the same American music, even if, whether it's pop music or what, it's all based on blues, it's all based on African American music in some way. And that's the common language that we all share musically in this country. And uh, the perception of that language is found in America. When you talk about a uh, quintessential bebop tune, you're uh, most likely talking about a tune that's played at a very fast tempo, uh, uh, that's based more on uh, harmony than on melody. Uh, you don't uh, often hear the melody. The theme is generally stated at the beginning or the melody, and then uh, soloists uh, improvise on that. Uh, generally in a, in a more sophisticated, and more adventurous and uh, further ranging way than uh, swing musicians do, you know. So uh, that's what you hear, and generally you'll hear longer solos uh, and more development of a, a greater variety of ideas uh, based on the uh, chord changes, the structure of the song being played, whether it's a, a standard or an original. But generally you can describe bebop as a fiery, uh, high energy, uh, although some of those things also are in swing. Because, hell, you get a good swing band, and, I mean, they'll just tear up a room just as much as a bebop band would, you know. Uh, so it's a different style and approach uh, that's hard to describe. It, it's, uh, it's more harmonic-based uh, bebop is than melodic-based. Uh, that's the key technical difference. Um, and generally, the song in bebop serves the soloist. I think that's, that's yes, that's a, a key difference between bebop and some other styles, uh, where the song is at the forefront with uh, most swing musicians. They want to make sure their listeners can hear the melody and uh, will hear familiar strains of a tune. So they'll play closer to the melody than bebop players will. Bebop players will leave the melody way behind so that you'll, uh, unless you are, have listened for a long time, have good ears, know something about chord changes, uh, you won't know what they're playing after, once they've finished playing the theme. Thank you. Billy Peterson on the bass. Yeah. Kenny Horst on drums. And our special guest from Copenhagen, Denmark, Jonas Muller on the piano. Yeah. We'd like to uh, play a ballad now, and this is written by a piano player also from Denmark, Jan Kasperson. He was here with me two years ago. And uh, Jan, he's uh, very fond of Thelonious Monk and Billy Strayhorn and Duke Ellington. And this tune is called Flowers from Duke's Garden.
Thank you very much.